Thank you for being here. My name is Wendy Knight. I'm the Commissioner of Tourism and Marketing. Uh, I had an opportunity to speak with a reporter yesterday from the Wall Street Journal who said that uh, Vermonters were insufferable because we take ourselves too seriously. So uh, in the interest of not taking myself too seriously, I wanted to first acknowledge that this is a little intimidating being here with you guys like this. Um, I should feel a little bit more comfortable. I'm a, a former journalist, so um, I will warn you that um, I've been known to mispronounce names. Um, I can't even say the correct acronym for the agency that I work for. What rolls out of my mouth is ACDC, not ACCD. So I've forewarned you that uh, I may make some mistakes here. Um, the Department of Tourism and Marketing is responsible for promoting Vermont as a tourism destination and bringing 13 million people into the state every year uh, with an economic impact of $2.6 billion. Increasingly, the marketing and content and writing expertise of the department, including Vermont Life, is being tapped to help build and grow the Think Vermont Economic Development Initiative. So that's why we're here today to talk about tourism and the intersection of economic uh, development. I'm pleased that the governor was available uh, to announce this exciting initiative. Hopefully I don't get your name uh, wrong while I introduce you. Uh, it's my honor and privilege to introduce Governor Phil Scott. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Whoops. Well, thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Commissioner Knight. Uh, I'm pleased to announce today a new economic development tourism initiative launched this week. It's called Stay to Stay Weekends. As you know, for years on average, we've lost six workers from our workforce every single day. We still have about 15,000 fewer workers than we did in 2009. That's why expanding our workforce is one of the top priorities of my administration. So we must think outside the box about how to help more Vermonters enter the labor force and to attract more working families and young professionals to Vermont. And that's exactly what the Department of Tourism and Marketing did as it created this program for out-of-state visitors who may be interested in living, living full-time in Vermont. This unique lodging and networking package will be piloted, piloted in three regions, Rutland, Brattleboro, and Bennington, Manchester, over four separate weekends throughout the year. The department is partnering with local chambers, young professional networks, and regional development commissions on this initiative. I'm pleased to have some of these partners here today, Adam Grinold from the uh, Brattleboro Development Credit Corp and uh, Mary Cohen from the Rutland Region Regional uh, Chamber of Commerce. And I want to thank our additional partners as well, including the Rutland Young Professionals, the Bennington County Industrial Corp, the Brattleboro Chamber of Commerce, and the Shires of Vermont, representing the Bennington and Manchester regions. Thank you for your creative and innovative thinking and commitment to working with Commissioner Knight and the entire tourism and marketing team to launch this program. Over the three-day stay-to-stay weekend, out-of-state visitors will connect with employers, entrepreneurs, uh, potential neighbors, and local officials so they can begin to see themselves as Vermonters. Beginning on Friday evening, guests will be welcomed at a reception hosted by a local chamber or young professional group where they'll meet community leaders, uh, business owners, uh, young professionals, as well as other visitors interested in moving to Vermont. They'll spend the weekend exploring the region and its many attractions. And on Monday, they'll meet with employers who are hiring, uh, take a drive or walking tour with a realtor, uh, visit an incubator or co-working uh, space to meet with entrepreneurs and professionals, uh, these pre-arranged visits will help them learn about living and working here in Vermont. No state is better positioned for economic development tourism than Vermont. We have one of the most iconic brands known throughout the world. 13 million people come to Vermont each year with many repeat visitors. Because of their strong affinity for Vermont, they represent an obvious audience for a targeted program to help people move so instead of just visiting, they can live and work here. We offer good jobs, opportunities for local investment, and a great place to live and raise a family. 
Status Day Weekends is part of the Agency of Commerce and Community Development's work to attract new workers and businesses. It will also be incorporated into our larger cross-agency effort to recruit and relocate people to Vermont called Think Vermont Move. We believe this initiative will be an effective tool in the toolbox as we work to reverse our demographic trends. It will show, showcase our quality of life, micro-target people who have a known attraction to Vermont, incentivize them to move here, and provide support and information from the Department of Labor relocation agents to help them relocate. We hope that the legislature will support Think Vermont Move for this session so that we can continue to encourage more people to visit Vermont and experience all the state has to offer. I'll turn it back over to Commissioner Knight. Thank you, Governor. Uh, as the Governor mentioned, we have two of our local partners with us today. We're grateful that they could make the trip up. Um, Adam Grinold from the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation. And did I, did I get that right? Yes. And Mary Cohen from the Rutland Regional Chamber of Commerce. Adam. Hello, my name is Adam Grinold. I am the Executive Director of the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation, often known as BDCC. We are the Regional Development Corporation for Wyndham County. Our affiliate entity, Sevitz, was first formed in 2011, helps us develop our strategic priorities designed to improve the regional economy. Together, BDCC and Sevitz work closely with the Agency of Commerce and Community Development on all things economic development in our region. Because of the regional research and strategic planning that we have been doing for several years, we've been looking at the workforce challenge deeply. In order to understand it and to develop strategies to mitigate existing challenges and future challenges. In response, we developed the Southern Vermont Workforce Center of Excellence, which takes a systems approach to increasing the talent pipeline, improving retention of our young people, and increasing demand-driven solutions based on employers' needs. It's all about connecting people with the opportunities here, and this is why we are so excited to partner with the state. This administration is increasing the focus and investment on the needs to recruit and retain people. We have great jobs, great organizations that allow people a promising future here in Vermont, but we need to connect people to those opportunities. And that then have to tell that story. And that's what Think Vermont and Stay to Stay are all about. The news is full of stories about how competition for workers is tight around the country. Think Vermont is about comp competing for those workers that we need here. It's about leveraging all the unique assets that we have here in Vermont, which is not just our awesome quality of place. It's the terrific organizations and companies that we can work for and grow in. It's a great place to start and grow a business, and it's our communities and our people. Stay to Stay is helping connect us with people who can thrive here, and it's helping them connect with jobs so they too can become Vermonters and grow with us. As we say in Southern Vermont, come to Vermont for a weekend, become a Vermonter for life. Thank you for the opportunity to support this program. Everybody. The Rutland County community is very pleased to participate in the State to State pilot program. Its innovative way fits perfectly into the Rutland County's regional marketing initiative and efforts to help reverse the population trend and support employers in their quest for a robust workforce. We are on board with the Governor and the Vermont Department of Tourism and look forward to our region and other regions working collaboratively with the state to address our economic development needs. As marketing efforts like the Regional Marketing Initiative and Think Vermont Move get in gear to attract people to our region and our state, we are well poised to welcome them. We do have an iconic brand, like the Governor said, and a great quality of life with outdoor assets surrounding us. If we match this with one of, many, with one of our many career opportunities offered throughout the state, we have a home run. An exciting component of the State to State program is the important role our lodging partners play in converting our visitors to residents. Our lodging partners are in the front line and are very skilled at making our visitors feel welcome. As we all work collaboratively to share the extraordinary assets of the state, I truly believe our efforts will result in success. Again, the Rutland region 
appreciates the opportunity to participate in this day to day program and work with the very notable Think Vermont Move campaign. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Mary. We're going to open up to questions. Uh, so how much money do you need from the legislature? For the state of state? Yeah. Uh, the, let me explain that this pilot program is being uh, launched in three communities with existing FY18 funds. Okay. Um, we've uh, allocated up to $50,000 in a paid media campaign. We expect that we're going to uh, earn, achieve some earned media, so we may not spend all $50,000. Um, but this, this pilot program is with uh, FY18 funding. Okay. Well, the governor mentioned asking the legislature. Well, this is for the Think Vermont Move uh, okay. um, campaign that we uh, had initiated. We're still hopeful that we'll get that through in the budget in some respect. It doesn't appear that it's included in uh, what was passed out of the um, Appropriations Committee in the House at this point, uh, but we're still hopeful that they'll see the merits of, of this because of our demographic trends and uh, what the challenges that we're facing. Uh, we need to do something different than we're doing today. So that's why it's exciting to see this. This is more of a grassroots effort where people are working together across uh, different regions in order to, to see what works and, and then reflect on that. What makes you think people are going to want to participate in this? Well, I, yeah. I think it's been used in other areas, so I'll let Wendy. Uh, yeah, so organically what we hear from our lodging partners and our industry <coughs> hospitality partners is that when people come to State of Vermont, they express a desire to want to live here full time. And, and often we see that when visitors come, um, they do move fo here full time, so that we know it happens organically. What, we try, what we're trying to do with this program is create a structured weekend around that that's built towards not the visitor that wants a ski vacation or a romantic getaway, but that someone that actually is thinking about living here or would like to live here. And that's why the elements of it pertain to what it would be like to live here. So we already know that people express interest in living here, and so this is designed to get them to come up, kind of a toe in the water to see, meet the key people, um, experience Vermont. They go around with a realtor, or they can meet with employers that are hiring. They can check out an incubator space. There's networking opportunities for them to connect with other um, people that are interested in living here, uh, neighbors potentially, entrepreneurs. So we're trying to create this effort. And then when they go home, there's that connection. So actually one of the um, uh, inspirations from for this program was what Rutland's doing in um, their community with their marketing initiative. And they had, had a great story that they shared with me when I went to visit about a couple who came to, you should tell the story. Yeah, tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> so we were having Winterfest week um, in Rutland last year in, in February, and there was it was a beautiful day. We were having an ice sculpture contest in our Main Street Park. And there was a young couple that stopped by investigating. They had come to, New, to Vermont from New Jersey for the weekend and they were thinking about moving. Their family and friends all thought they were crazy, but they were really considering it, so they were coming up for the weekend. They happened upon our ice sculpting contest and, and started talking to somebody about the chance of moving, and so immediately they said, oh, go talk to the chamber. They're doing the whale sculpture over there. So inevitably they came over and we started talking and, and, and uh, figuring out what their interests were. They were spending the, the, that night, actually it was Saturday, that evening in northern Vermont, exploring some of the areas there. But what we did was got their name and we said, what, what kind of work do you do? What industry are you in? And we started connecting the dots from them. And that's just one example. And if we can make those connections and, and continue those conversations with people who are considering this, uh, I think we'll, we'll be successful. And the state to state program fits right in with that. How do you identify potential targets? Tar uh, yeah. Targets? Potential okay. visitors, visitors who, who might so be like, interested yes. in the extended stay and you know spending it. It sounds a little you know odd to say you know come here and ski and then visit a factory. Um, so how do you how do you identify the people who might be most amenable to this? Right. So the way we're promoting it is we're using our social media channels. Um, we have a consumer network that has over 150,000 um, uh, subscribers. Um, and Steve uh, Cook, the deputy commissioner, can talk a little bit about what we've been seeing so far just in the two days uh, that we've launched the program. Um, what, what we're doing is we're focusing on industry and market segments that are uh, have key positions that we're working to try to fill here in Vermont. And uh, 
what our understanding is from what we've learned from people who have relocated to Vermont is they had some type of connection initially with the state, whether it was visiting as a vacation destination, uh, a family connection, a college uh, experience here in the state. So we really feel that these are our most likely candidates. So uh, we are uh, communicating directly to consumers who have some type of affiliation in Vermont, whether it be through university, uh, vacation, um, or a connection through visiting the state as a vacation. And does the state cover any element of the lodging and food costs that they'll incur while they're here? Is that on that? No, this is uh, on their dime. So we are inviting guests to come up um, and experience Vermont as they might as a, a Vermonter. Um, but these are people who are going to pay for their uh, their trip here. Uh, the idea wasn't to subsidize people. It's just to make a, a package that would appeal to those people that are interested in living here. We will have incentives, for example, when they leave on Monday, we'll have incentives uh, for them to, to return and to experience Vermont again. We have talked about, again, this is a pilot program, so we're working really closely with the local chambers and young professional networks to tweak the program. And we have talked about having some incentives um, in, the, in the beginning so that would bring them up here in the first place. We've talked about having some lodging discounts, but we decided we needed to get the program running and then as we you know roll on, roll along to June or August or October then we can uh, change change the incentives and change the program a little bit do you have a target number what will be ideal so for the state in our strategic plan that we have presented to the governor's office, we are um, on the hook for recruiting and getting 1,000 participants to come to the State of State weekend. So that was the, the strategic goal that we put out there. Um, I will also mention that in the department's strategic goal, we have an, um, a goal of increasing our average length of stay, and we also have a goal of increasing our, the revenue that comes from the rooms and meals tax. So from our perspective, a tourism perspective, even if nobody decides to live here, we are achieving our goals of building awareness of Vermont as a place to live and grow, not just to visit. We are ex expanding our average length of stay because this is a three-day weekend, and then we're increasing our rooms and meals tax. So from our perspective, there's no downside. And then are you going to track those 1,000 people and see how many actually end up moving here? Absolutely. So how, how far out will you need to track to know if this is a success from that perspective? Um, I think that we talked about that we would look at it, uh, I mean, we're going to be looking at it as it goes, we, you know, as the pilot court kind of progresses, but we would look at it on a, on a year, yearly basis, so we would be able to look at their, um, their tax filings. And would you look at other parts of the state, too? You mentioned it's starting with Brattleboro, Bennington, yes. and Rutland, but might northern Vermont be Absolutely. A... Yeah, we've had a lot of interest from other communities um, interested in participating, both lodging properties and chambers and young professional networks. Um, and so the, the idea is to, to pilot this, see how it works. If it's successful um, and we get some additional funding, then we can expand the program uh, to some additional communities. I mean, our hope is that we would have you know, a state-to-state -state weekend in every single uh, county, um, you know, and, and we would have more than four weekends. Right now, we've just started with four weekends, but the idea is for, there's no reason why you couldn't have them once a month, for example, in every single county. But we need additional funding for that, and we need to see how this actually works out. This is a strange question. I know both of you have children who live out of state. Have you asked them what would it take to get you to move back to Vermont? Uh, I've asked my daughter uh, many times uh, a good opportunity uh, job and, again, an affordable place to live. Uh, I think that, that those are two things. Uh, they understand the quality of life. Uh, they'd love, love to come back at some point, uh, but they're still looking for that opportunity and, and being able to find uh, housing that they could afford. My daughter hates the snow, so she's never coming back, <laughs> except to visit. <laughs> she comes back to visit, but uh, so. When are these initial four weekends, the dates? Yep, um, April 6th through 9th, uh, June 1st through 4th, August 10th through 13th, and October, I have to give you the 29th through 31st? 26? Uh, it's on the website, uh, and I, I, can, I can get that. It's vermontvacation.com slash stay to stay. So. 
So not during leaf season? Uh, we did it at the tail end of uh, right after Columbus Day. Yeah, we didn't think it, uh, we, we really wanted these weekends to be um, we, weekends where, one, the lodging properties weren't necessarily packed with visitors that want to just visit. Um, but also the idea is that we have to present Vermont in its real form. And so if people come up in April, it might be spring, it might be mud season, it might be winter. So that's just Vermont. So there was, there was a, no, no reluctance to try to make it in the, the most beautiful times of year here. Governor, are you on board with the gun legislation has to be sure passed out this week? Is there any other questions for any of the <laughs> Um, I, I'm a little bit confused about funding. Sorry, no, no. Uh, for for the various <coughs> programs that have been talked about, because I understand that the BAA no longer includes money for the Big Think Vermont initiative, and there's nothing in the 2019 budget, and it's not clear to me whatever happened to Vermont Life. Can you explain where we are with all that stuff? There were well, a lot of moving pieces. Yeah, and I, I can explain uh, the Think Vermont uh, uh, initiative. Uh, was in the BAA uh, as we proposed and then they put a placeholder in uh, and at this point in time uh, the house it appears the house appropriations has uh, decided not to move forward with that initiative at this point uh, but we're only halfway through the session and uh, in the budget is being debated uh, I believe this afternoon uh, through this week and then we'll, we'll if it isn't included we'll go to work in the Senate. So is Vermont Life dead? No, I don't believe so. In fact, uh, I, maybe Wendy could talk about this a, a little bit more, but uh, it's, uh, it's actually holding its own at this point, uh, which is good news. Uh, but we think that uh, we could improve on that uh, with this uh, Think Vermont initiative. Sure, but what about the $3 million debt? Yeah, that's Life? still there. So uh, what, what do you do with that? You're just going to carry that forward? Um, at this point in time, there was no uh, sufficient uh, bids that came through that would have taken care of that debt. Um, so at, at this point, uh, we're uh, again treading water, so to speak, uh, trying to uh, do whatever we can to make sure that it doesn't cost the state anymore, mm -hmm. and uh, and and hopefully uh, again be able to utilize that mechanism for this Think Vermont uh, initiative as well. So how long are we going to carry the debt? Well, again, until <laughs> and, until we can come up with a, a feasible plan uh, to move forward, we believe uh, that this, with this initiative, with this investment, and the utilization of Vermont Life, uh, that we could actually start paying that back. Uh, but right now, um, it's not uh, not feasible. So Vermont Life is now um, uh, within the Department of Tourism and Marketing. Uh, it wasn't uh, uh, sent out to bid. I mean, it wasn't. Uh, we didn't have a licensing agreement. We didn't accept one of the bids for a licensing agreement. So right now, we're uh, operating it. We have a new director of sales. We're operating it successfully. We have a. a, a uh, expectation that we will not run any more deficits, um, so we will not contribute to the debt. The larger effort is that if we can uh, in invest the $3.2 million in a Think Vermont Move initiative, that we would be bringing more people here, that would be increasing the rooms and meals tax revenue, and then we would use a portion of that to reinvest into the Think Vermont Move and then to pay down uh, the Vermont Life debt. So that's the, the existing plan for, the think for how Vermont Life fits into Think Vermont Move. So it's a six million dollar cost. Then you need three million for Think Vermont. Three million you're carrying in debt for Vermont Life. Is that correct? Um, the plan for Vermont Life is to take a portion of that uh, and pay down. Maybe it's thirty, you know, three hundred thousand dollars for ten years, and that over a ten year period. Any other questions about stay to stay? This might be the time, unless you want to answer any other questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. So, Peter, good with the gun bill? Um, things, uh, it's my understanding uh, that they're coming closer to agreement on uh, two of the priority bills. Uh, I think that's, uh, if I have this right, 221 and 422. Um, we'll see uh, how that moves forward over the next uh, few days, but it, it appears that they're coming to some agreement. Uh, something might pass out of the uh, the Senate, I believe, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, as well, um, uh, S or uh, yeah, S55 uh, will be uh, appears that it's moved out of committee, or it, it is going to be. 
uh, if it hasn't already, uh, and then be debated on the on the floor this week. So um, they've uh, I think they've done some good work uh, within that bill, and uh, we'll see how it uh, how it works out uh, through the house. Specifically, there's a 10 round magazine capacity limit in that bill. Do you support that? But if you remember, I mean, it wasn't one of my priorities, uh, but at the same time, uh, when we had this discussion, I think it was right here in this room, uh, it was a talk about uh, whether I supported uh, a ban on assault weapons. And I had said, I answered that I didn't think that was feasible, that uh, you could take a 223 uh, deer uh, hunting rifle or a 308, uh, and, uh, and it's really about, and you can make it look um, intimidating uh, and so forth, but it's the same weapon in some respects. Uh, but it's the magazine size. Uh, so I had said uh, during, with my action plan, that it's something that should be discussed. I still believe it should be discussed. I, I honestly believe that it should be discussed on a, on a national level because it's gonna be very hard, I believe, to, uh, to, uh, to try and um, um, oversee uh, in the state. But again, uh, if that's included in this bill, we'll take a look and, and the details do matter on some of those provisions, but uh, I think they've, uh, they've Listen to uh, to a lot of Vermonters in that in that one bill. I mean, obviously you'll take a look at any bill that right. they put in front of you. Are you at this point inclined to support restrictions on magazine capacity? Well, yeah. Again, I'm the one that somewhat brought that up. Um, so, um, if if it makes its way through, its way through as part of this bill, and, and um, I, I can see myself supporting that. Uh, but again, details do matter. Do you have any plans to participate in the March for Our Lives on Saturday? I, I don't at this point in time. Um, I've, uh, I've heard uh, that uh, it's going to be a, a fairly large participation. Uh, I don't believe uh, that I've been asked to, to, uh, to come and speak or, or anything uh, of that nature. Uh, I do have an, a couple of other events uh, to attend. We'll see what happens. At this what point. do you say to a lot of these young folks participating in the advocacy work? Well, I think uh, their voices do matter, and I think that that's important. And I would, uh, I would say we'll see how many come, but uh, but it, it appears that they're going to be, um, it's going to be a, a widely attended event, and and I think it's a good example of how you can make a difference if you if you get active and and you uh, have your voices heard. Released a list of bills that you say you'll oppose because of taxes or fees. Included in that was S260. The Senate just passed S260 unanimously. Are you going to veto that if it lands on your desk? Uh, maybe you could remind me what that's S260 the uh, is. water quality. It would create, a, actually, I think a pair of study committees to come up with a long term funding if, mechanism. If it includes a tax or fee, uh, then I'll oppose it. Uh, and I wanted to be very clear about that. That uh, I, I said uh, this in the, the beginning of the session. Uh, I know that there was some criticism last year. They didn't think uh, that they, I, I, I don't believe that I was clear enough. So I've, I've learned from that experience and decided to initiate this letter uh, clearly spelling out uh, that I, I'm not supporting anything with a tax or fee. So well, the, find another way. The, that bill doesn't actually include a tax or fee. It includes a pathway to what might be a tax or fee proposal next year. Are you saying that you're not even willing to take that step? Well, again, I, I'm not familiar exactly with the with the details of the bill, but if it includes a tax or fee, then I would be opposed. But you're okay with language that sets out a study process to examine a funding mechanism? Uh, possibly, if, uh, if, if, but again, I'd like to see the details. I, that has been highlighted by my staff as one that uh, uh, has a tax or fee. But haven't, I mean, you've said we need to figure out the long term funding still, mechanism. I still believe so, yes. Would it not make sense then to have a process to come Possibly. to a resolution? Again, I, I haven't looked at the bill, but, uh, but we need to come up with a long term uh, funding mechanism. I do believe that we can have organic growth if we uh, continue with uh, initiatives like this where we get more people in. Uh, that we uh, have uh, fewer people leaving the state, fewer workers leaving our workforce, uh, then we'll have organic growth. We'll have more general fund dollars uh, as a result. I mean, you think about uh, the amount of uh, fewer workers in our workforce and what that represents. Uh, the folks, again, that buy homes, have families, utilize services, buy products, and then pay taxes. So if we have uh, 1,000 or 2,000 fewer every single year, 
that leads to a dramatic decline in revenue. So if we can focus on these areas, I believe that we'll have general fund dollars uh, to do uh, some of those, uh, to perform uh, some of the cleanup and, and some of those initiatives. So. I, uh, I believe there's another way to do it, uh, and uh, I think we're moving forward with that. You say we need a long-term funding mechanism, but then your office has released a list of bills that is opposed to the sole bill of the legislature right. that would think that about a long-term. tax or fee this year? No, it would not. It would just design I, one. Okay. I, haven't, I haven't looked at it, but, uh, but again, uh, it was on the list of uh, bills that I assumed had a tax or fee. But you, in your letter, that was presumably written by you, signed by you, right. you said you can't support that bill because, quote, it requires the design of a fee. Okay. Um, well, again, I think we do need a long-term uh, mechanism, but I also believe uh, that we're, there are other avenues uh, to, uh, to get to that. Um, I, I believe that uh, Senator Leahy uh, appeared in, in the, the bill that uh, he, is, uh, he has offered. Uh, that uh, Vermont might make out fairly well is some phosphorus uh, money in that. I don't know if that will help in this regard, uh, but we need to leverage all the assets we can. So, Governor, do you support the design of a fee or not? Well, it depends on what, the, what the design is. Well, we I just guess. told you what it is, yeah. what the bill says. Well, so no, I, I guess it, it depends on what the design of the fee or. <coughs> no, but they're, but they're is. talking about just coming you're up talking with about a design. If, if the design There's is no a design yet, tax, they're talking I, about coming up with a design. They're studying it, right? Yes. Right, so we're not talking about a fee in this bill or a tax. We do support the study a, of, a, of, a, of a fee. Yeah. Yes or no? Do you well, support that? Uh, no. Do you support the study? Uh, obviously, you don't I support the, the letter, study. so I don't, I don't support the study. Okay. Thanks. Governor, are you, are you really confident that a program like this one that you've just designed, you know, even if it gets to be, if it has some success, but there, it's totally untested, is going to bring in enough revenue? No, not, not, this, not this one program. No. I mean, this Think Vermont initiative, uh, this Think Vermont Move initiative. What are even your other plans to try to, to uh, recruit more people to come to the state? Has anybody, has your office, has your uh, administration done a, a, a statistical study as to what the likely uh, revenue uh, consequences of this would be? Well, I know that uh, I know that the uh, the revenue loss as a result of doing nothing uh, has uh, has uh, deteriorated our revenue sources, and, and it's led to the the problems that we face today. And so, doing nothing, I don't believe, is an option, and I believe that we need to uh, think outside the box, take another initiative, uh, as South Dakota did, and so forth. So, I think that we. Uh, we have a good product to sell. I, I believe we just need a mechanism to help uh, uh, incorporate that. You uh, said earlier this week you're going to have your commissioner of public safety look into these allegations of illegal behavior by a government official while he'd be bought business in China. Most of the people who would have any direct knowledge of that have long since left the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Will his investigation involve interviewing people who no longer work for the state I, of Vermont? I, I believe what I'd ask uh, our Commissioner Anderson to do was to take a look and see if there was anything uh, that has been done previously. Was there an investigation done at that point in time? If there was allegations at that point, uh, did, did, was there an investigation? Uh, and, and if so, uh, what were what the details of that? If, 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 if there was no investigation that he's able to find any evidence of, what will your next step be? Well, I'd like to hear what, uh, what uh, um, Russell Barr has to say. Uh, apparently, uh, he, is, uh, he appears to have what he thinks is credible evidence uh, regarding that. And if so, uh, I look forward for him, to him uh, to come forward with that uh, to take a look. It's, if there's any uh, credible evidence uh, that would lead us to believe that uh, a state employee was involved in something like that, then we should further the investigation. Governor, if it hasn't been done at this point in time. Governor, would it define credible evidence, please? Um, something, uh, well, again, I would, uh, I would uh, ask our commissioner, uh, who is a former U.S. attorney, I'm sure that he could uh, define what he believes credible evidence would be uh, and then take the, the proper steps. And, and uh, if, if there is something there, then we should move forward. So the reason I ask is because, you know, sometimes uh, government gets involved in investigations when 
allegations are made by a whistleblower and they may or may not have evidence. So I guess I don't understand, you know, when something comes up like this where there are allegations that could be credible, why you're not taking it a step further. Why, why aren't well, you I, I haven't further? said we aren't why aren't taking you committing, it. Why aren't you committing to an investigation, period? I would like to see if there was an investigation done previously. Uh, again, if there was allegations made and there was evidence before and this somebody came forward with this, I, I would assume that there was some sort of investigation. Let's get the details of that before we determine what our next steps are. So it's been three or four days. Don't you know if there's been an investigation? I, I do or not at this point in time. Uh, I know that uh, the commissioner has been, uh, he, he's away uh, today. For instance, I, in anticipation of this, I wanted to find out if he'd found out anything, but uh, wasn't able to get in touch with him. So what will you do if there were no, or what was not an investigation? Well, again, I'd like him to review the folder uh, again as, the, as a former U.S. attorney. Uh, I believe that he would uh, have the expertise to take a look at that and see whether anything is there uh, worth pursuing. Has anybody from the executive branch reached out to Russell Barr to s see if there, he's willing to show what he has? Not, uh, not to my knowledge. I, and I, I believe that um, Russell Barr had said that he was going to come forward with that himself. So I, I assume that will happen soon. <coughs> Has there been any news from USCIS regarding the shutdown of the regional center? Have not heard anything back from them at this point in time, and that was uh, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have not heard anything back. We're still continuing. Uh, to, we're not taking uh, any new projects on at this point, and we'd like to, to wind down that operation. I'd like to take another stab at the taxes and fees question because uh, I'll have to go back and listen to the tape, but it, it seems like we come out of this more confused than we came in. Um, there are items on that list in that letter that do not call for a tax or fee this year and do not establish a tax or fee any time in the future. Um, they call for development of a proposal, but the proposal itself would be subject to legislative approval and your signature at some future date if there is a proposal. Um, so it seems like you're moving the goalpost significantly here if you are opposing any bill that might eventually result in a tax. Right? There, might be, there may be another reason as well from my standpoint. I might oppose uh, something that sets up, uh, let's say, a carbon tax. Mm -hmm. If there was a study done uh, for a carbon tax, I would oppose it. I think, it's a, waste of, I think it's a waste of resources. I think it's a highly regressive tax I mean, in uh, case that would it, impact uh, <clears throat> many, many um, Vermonters, and specifically rural Vermont. The S-260 is the same thing, only on water quality, where they are calling for <clears throat> studying a, a tax and coming back next year with a tax or fee, possible, possible over the funding mechanism next year. But S-260 itself does not commit the state to collecting I'm, a dime in taxes. I'm sure they can come up with a, uh, a, a, some sort of formula for a tax without having a study to do so uh, and uh, imposing that. They're pretty creative. And I believe that uh, at the same time, I've committed to uh, following through on, uh, and we will fund uh, water quality. We're going to, we made a commitment. We're going to do that. We'll find the money and uh, we'll move forward. Your administration was statutorily required to develop a funding mechanism by November 15th of last year and failed to do so. So I think it's a bit of a separation of powers issue there myself, but uh, well, there wasn't a lot of that. No, no, but I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, we, we didn't believe that we weren't able to come to uh, agreement on what that would be. But that, we, that I did, wasn't we did put something forward. We said, uh, I said we could use capital fund dollars to do so, we could uh, we could make this uh, this happen, and we're committed to doing so, following through on water quality. Is there a plan or just a commitment? Commitment. Um, what about coverage code? Yeah, that's a very concerning issue uh, for us as a state, and particularly some of these rural communities. So uh, I'm. Uh, we've been in contact with our commissioner, Commissioner Tierney, who's, who's reaching out to other partners to see what we can do uh, to try and uh, bridge this gap. Um, because uh, obviously we want to make sure that these, these communities still have cell service, uh, become accustomed to having cell service. Uh, it's not as easy as I, I thought. Uh, I thought that maybe 
uh, some uh, organization could take over and just just perform the same duties. But from a technical aspect, uh, it's not that easy, but we're still working on it. And we're hoping uh, that we're going to have a solution. I've been talking with uh, legislators as well about working together and trying to figure out how we, uh, how we can accomplish this. Have you given any more thought to the $14 million that hasn't been spoken for in the tobacco settlement and how we might want to use right. that? Um, well, I, I think they have a plan. Uh, obviously, I'm trying to respect uh, that uh, the deal that was somewhat made, uh, the, the legislature uh, had uh, more authority over the, the second $14 million. Uh, so um, I'm respecting that. Uh, they've, they've come up with, I believe, Ten million um, for unfunded uh, liabilities, uh, and uh, putting some other uh, other away, and, and utilizing some for UVM and the state colleges, I believe. And you agree with that? Well, I, I think uh, the Senate will probably have a position as well. I think, in fairness, uh, this came uh, about. We we're all fairly surprised by this. Uh, I hadn't heard uh, that there was a settlement that was imminent. And uh, I think this took all of us by surprise, and, and the House uh, probably didn't have quite as much time as they'd like uh, to, to address this. Uh, but, but putting this money aside as they did, I think, is safe. Uh, and then uh, and they'll probably, I would imagine, that they will continue uh, to, uh, to debate amongst themselves uh, as to what to do with it. But the Senate uh, is having some time to, uh, to reflect on that. Governor, I know you've talked about this in the past, but uh, these tariffs on aluminum and steel are set to go effect tomorrow. Any concerns there? Yeah, I mean, I still have my concerns as to what this will do uh, in terms of retribution, uh, particularly with our, our friends to the north. Uh, we, I desperately would like to see us come to a conclusion on a, some sort of agreement with NAFTA, uh, that I think that that would be beneficial to our state and to the country, uh, for that matter. And, and I heard uh, that uh, the, uh, the uh, last uh, meeting that they had in Montreal was productive. Uh, they move, they're going to Mexico City next and then, uh, then end up in Washington. So we'll watch uh, in uh, Mexico to see uh, how, how they, if they're able to progress uh, and then become uh, probably a little bit more active, although we, we've sent letters and so forth and voiced our concerns about NAFTA uh, uh, all along the process. So um, again, I have concerns about the tariff though. Um, there was another story about JP developers recently about uh, your predecessor staying in an apartment of Dil Kiros. Um, I was wondering whether or not you think that sort of that risks decline in public trust for the government, whether you see any obligation to do something about it to address it in any way, um, and more generally, sort of the status of the state's lawsuit. Yeah, um, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, I read that uh, I hadn't heard that one before, uh, but it's obviously concerning. I think it's. Uh, uh, maybe poor judgment uh, in terms of uh, staying at, at, at someone's um, facility uh, like that, but uh, that's that's just me. Uh, and we'll, uh, we're moving forward on our uh, on our uh, court cases. We're both uh, defending uh, one against us uh, in uh, in the loyal court, uh, but also progressing uh, forward with our our litigation against uh, uh, Queros and Stanger. You said it's concerning, but not concerning enough. Do well, I'm not sure what to do about it, to be honest with you. It looks like you may have violated a state statute. Yeah, I, I'm still not sure what to do about it uh, in terms of uh, whether there was a violation. I, I still believe that there is uh, an active investigation going on by the U.S. attorney. Uh, maybe that would be covered in that, uh, in that investigation, but I don't have any details of that either. Doesn't the state have an interest in, in going back and kind of setting things right in terms of any ethical gray areas that may have come up or even lines crossed during the EB-5 program? Uh, I mean, why not go back and, and try to figure out what actually happened? Well, we may. Um, it, it may lead to that. Um, uh, we need to uh, get the, the courts, uh, court uh, cases settled, uh, both against us and, and our prosecuting uh, Stanger and Queros. And then we'll see where we go from there. So, but that could be years, right? So I, I hope not, but but it could. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you.